The Archaeological Image of Dolinska Museums are guardians of historical memory, like grandfathers who tell their grandchildren about the world that once was. In a museum, the past transforms into history and man becomes conscious of their roots. Thousands of smaller and bigger events have shaped human history and human themselves. They had an impact on some events but did not have an impact on others. They remember some of them, but the majority has been concealed by the darkness of the past. Nevertheless, man knows that they are a historical being. If they know what happened, then they know why the image of their world is the way it is. A presentation by the Dolinska Museum. Slovenia is located in the southeastern part of Central Europe. Important trade and military routes already crossed this part in ancient times. During the Iron Age, the Amber Road also went through the territory of the Republic of Slovenia, under which merchants linked the Baltic and the Mediterranean coasts. Trade routes from the north and south were already fortified and the Roman Empire further fortified road links to east in Dolinska towards Greece, Scythia and Persia. Today, Novo Mesto is the capital of Dolinska and one of the major economic and cultural centers in Slovenia. Several thousand years of history is presented by the archaeological image in the Dolinska Museum in Novo Mesto. History of Archaeological Excavations The first archaeological finds from Kulodvorska Street in 1890, which were also extensively reported by the newspapers at that time, are proof of a rich and very old settlement in Dolinska and Novomisto. The Novomisto exhibition of these finds was even more resounding as it was prepared by the museum conservator Ferdinand Schulz for the first time outside the museum premises. Even excavations in Beletovert in 1902 revealed a wealth of Roman and Celtic finds which they had taken to the Provincial Museum in Ljubljana or Vienna. The antiquarian excavator Jernej Pichnik also knew about many archaeological sites and already since 1883 his co-worker Dragotin Dijman, the curator of the Kranska Provincial Museum from Ljubljana. Pichnik excavated the majority of important archaeological sites in Dolinska for almost three decades, as did the Countess of Mecklenburg before World War II, who had especially excavated in Stichna and on Mount Magdalena. In 1973, the archaeologist Tone Knies started systematically exploring and excavating Belitovert, Marov, Kandia and Kapitelska Niva. Danilo Briszczek also headed the excavation at the wealthy Belitovert site. The Novomisto archaeological location came into fruition under the subsequent leadership of Danilo Briszczek and Borut Krish, and the locations in Stichna, Mount Magdalena and Vace lifted the Dolinska Iron Age to the European level. Dolinska is the most important region of the early Iron Age in southeastern Europe. The Stone Age. Prehistoric man was also present in Dolinska from the early Stone Age onwards.
Stone finds were numerous, especially in the Bela Cirko, White Church. The early Paleolithic stronghold Luknya Cave near Novomisto was also rich in finds. Larger settlements have been proven in the Ineolithic period when the fertile Dolinska plains are settled by the first farmers and stock breeders. They mainly breed small cattle, thus sheep and goats, but they still use stone tools for work. Valuable evidence from the early Paleolithic period is a spike from Rupertschwerg. Polished stone axes are the most recognizable tools from the early Stone Age in Dolinska. However, the first metallurgists are already on their way. The Metal Period – Copper and Bronze People of the Copper Age of the Ineolithic period had probably already settled Dolinska in the first half of the 4th millennium BC. People from the Copper Age also lived in the Luknya cave near Prichna. Ceramics began to flourish at this time. Some products are directly magnificent, especially in size. Men had already permanently settled at that time, and in addition to breeding small cattle, they also cultivated barley and crops and stored them in ceramic pots. In addition to the permanent settlement and agriculture, metal tools and weapons, copper products, began to radically change their lives. The use of bronze products in the 3rd millennium BC opened the path to prosperity for the community at that time. Although men also simultaneously continued to use stone tools and weapons, they increasingly used bronze products. This has also been proven by the treasure find of Gorni Suhadol. Women's bronze bracelets are a sign of prestige. The spectacle fibula starts to receive skillful designs. Wearers produce new weights and necklaces made from glass strawberries, become luxurious according to design and color. Bronze armor from the 7th century, which was excavated in Kandia, Novomisto, is a remarkable example of a bronze object from the next metallic period, from the early Iron Age. Early Iron Age The ascension of the people of Dolinska begins with the introduction of metals, which opened the door to all the trade routes at that time. They already knew metallurgical production skills quite well in the 9th and 8th centuries BC, and with their products they had integrated in the large area of Sitio art which had spread in the west across the entire Po plain of northern Italy down to Bologna and the northern Apennines. In the world of ornamentation, the Sitiuli from Dolinska, otherwise still produced from bronze, incorporated a realistic figurative nature and a society at that time. They have found so many Sitiuli in Dolinska that Novomisto deserves to be called the town of Sitiuli. Many other finds are also rich and explicable. The iron ore limonite was the raw material that made it possible for metallurgists to allow forging and trade to flourish. Iron products became a source of wealth. The ceramic trade also blossomed. Numerous pottery items, especially pots of course, were produced in different shapes, sizes and with decorations.
Women's tombs, many of which are also on Capitel Scaniva in Novo Misto, are full of rich ornamentation. There are painted glass necklaces in almost every women's tomb. Bronze fibulae were part of the everyday dressing culture. Amber came from the north and decorated the chests of wealthy Holstead ladies. Bronze ornaments were still in fashion, but gold jewellery became most fashionable already in the 6th century. Men's tombs have revealed their stories to archaeologists. The Holstead nobility and princes were armed with bronze defence weapons at the time, a helmet, armour, a shield and an attacking weapon made of iron, an axe and spear. The warriors were buried together with their weapons and princes were also buried with their horses. High mounds, tumuli near Stichna, eloquently testified to the number of burials of the Holstead inhabitants of Dolinska at that time. The Kapitelskaniva above Novomesto is an extremely wealthy cemetery of the early Iron Age. The first excavation of mounds in Dolinska in the 19th century had already revealed an extremely large quantity of glass jewellery. An average of 10 to 20,000 glass beads were found in each mound in which there are over 1,000 in Dolinska. They counted around 2,000 beautifully painted glass beads only in one grave on Kapitelskaniva, which certainly speaks about having their own glass industry, since the raw material silica, sand, is in abundance here. Dark clouds have already crowded over the wealthy Holstead society in Dolinska. The militant Celts prevail here in the 3rd century BC. The Late Iron Age or the Celts in Dolinska. The grave finds on the Kapitelskaniva show that the new invaders, the Celtic Tauriski, only Celtic Z, the natives, all the weapons from the grave are deformed. They burned and buried the deceased in an open burial ground, together with weapons and grave goods. The Aborigines lived on, and the Tauriski brought them a pottery spindle, improvements in forging and stylized ornamentation. The ceramic ware has a different ornamentation as a human face first appears on the Cantaros, and more and more ceramic ware has the features of the early Iron Age or Latin culture. The most significant innovation in forgery and weapon production is the long double-edged sword, the Celtic long sword, which enabled the Celts to have military superiority. Celtic ornamentation becomes very recognizable with plant patterns, and Celtic weaponry made of sound steel is increasingly effective also against the incoming Romans. Even clothing decoration, fibulae for clothing, bears the Celtic seal and even the horse equipment is recognizable. The new style does not surpass the jewellery as colour glass bracelets are remnant. However, they are also very skillful in the manufacturing of silver and gold jewellery, rings for example. In 35 BC, the Romans rule over the Celts. The Roman period. A 
A Roman soldier also marched into Dolinska at the end of the first century BC. Many military scouts sifted the region thoroughly and became familiar with all the routes, settlements and strongholds of the indigenous people. First, the Romans concluded a trade agreement with the Dolinska Tauriski, then a peace agreement, and then they also subordinated them militarily. Dolinska passed into the framework of the Pannonia Superior province, and the Romans built military camps and settlements. They became the inhabitants of Dolinska, and the indigenous people were eventually Romanized. The bronze Hercules from Trebnia is a symbol of this authority. The Romans introduced new gods, but the indigenous people did not reject them until the onset of Christianity. Grave goods also reveal new fibula motifs and numerous glass products indicate domestic production and importation. This cup was brought by traders from Greece and the inscription is shouting out cheers. The ceramic pottery was of different origin. Pottery from fine terra sigillata clay was extremely valued, but also expensive. Oil lamps were also domestic production. The Romans also introduced taxes, military service, writing, money and a new way of building houses with central heating and plumbing in Dolinska. Cemeteries were located outside of the settlement and grave goods indicated the burning of the deceased up to the 4th century AD. Faith in life after death was also taken over by Christianity, which introduced a new inhumation burial. Even at this point, the Roman Empire had already started to collapse under the souls of new warriors on horseback. They came from the north and east. Late Antiquity Numerous civil wars between military commanders finally exhausted the Roman Empire in the 5th century AD and the citizens tried to save themselves. Militant people from northern and eastern Europe, which the Romans tried to subjugate, struck back. The military and social decline of the Western Roman Empire was completed. During this uncertain time, the citizens fled from all sorts of pillagers to the woods and places difficult to access and founded settlements and refuge there. People lived very modestly during those times of uncertainty since every long-distance trade route was dangerous. Useful items for survival were carefully guarded, yet decorative jewellery has a patina of time. Missionaries preached the Roman state religion Christianity to the people. The deceased were buried in the ground. People had been fleeing from new conquerors for centuries until time had not expired in the motionless early Middle Ages. Restoration Workshops the Gurum Castle in Novomisto is a location where archaeological finds are being revived.
Today, a modern museum can no longer breathe the past without restorers. They are the ones who inspire a soul and make the excavated items recognizable. A restorer is like the creator who created man from clay. They restore a jug from countless broken pieces, which were covered for centuries or millenniums, a piece that was used by our ancestors to carry water, food for survival. Many of the glass beads have started shining again, just as the necklaces of the past. Metal finds are even more worn out than ceramics due to the highly acidic soil covering the archaeological sites. Some finds are extremely disfigured. These days, the Dolinska Museum makes a decision on sending the finds to colleagues in famous and world-renowned restorer workshops at the Roman Germanic Central Museum in Mainz, Germany. Continuation of Excavation Archaeologists and restorers at the Dulinska Museum in Novomista will reveal and bring back the luster of many items covered by the rubble. They shall carefully transfer the remnants of distant past cultures and the traces of mankind to the present and preserve this for the future. So we know where we come from, who we are and where we are going. So we can find out at least a little of what was hidden by the veil of time. This never-ending riddle of human transience and unsatisfied curiosity. <laughs>